fun associated with the 70-year-old rivalry between Michigan and Ohio State. Good-natured kidding was the theme at today's Buckeye Booster Luncheon, where Woody Hayes showed up for the first time since his firing three years ago. But some people don't know when to stop. Paraphernalia, like some of these crude bumper stickers and buttons we found at an off-campus bookstore, and Michigan has them too, breed bad feelings. We didn't find any at the student bookstore because I discovered the university is making a conscious effort to keep things under control. We need to, to really call attention ourselves uh, to our fans and to our students about what this is all about and put the rivalry in its proper perspective. Uh, there have been some, some uh, rather uh, unhappy kinds of things that have happened in the past, uh, not on the field, but in the stands, and that's wrong. <laughs> As a direct result of the growing ugliness associated with this rivalry, three years ago, Ohio State formed the Sportsmanship Council. Its job, to neutralize fan hostility. Up in Ann Arbor, Bo Schembechler is doing his part. His personal guest for Saturday's game, Coach Woody Hayes. I'm Ann Doyle, TV2 Sports, Columbus, Ohio. The Ohio State Buckeyes fly into town at 7 this evening, and then tomorrow, snow or no snow, it's the big game. Michigan, of course, will have a secret weapon. More than 100,000 fans yelling, Go Blue. At Michigan Stadium, I'm Peter Lewin, News 4. Buckeye weakness is their secondary. Now, other teams have called it predictable. Of course, Bo Schembechler disagrees. All of those uh, comments came from the uh, few teams that were fortunate enough to have beaten them. And any time you win a game, you'll get the damnedest comments from the uh, winner that you've ever gotten. You know, like they just uh, solved the uh, riddle of uh, football. And uh, I don't look at it that way at all. And um, the reason that Ohio State has been passed on is that their schedule has been predominantly against passing teams. And when that happens, you're going to get yardage on you. You're get passing yardage on But when you look at a statistic where they're only giving up 80 yards a game rushing, now that's something else. I haven't heard anyone mention the fact that that is an, that's really an accomplishment, that you uh, haven't been able to run on this team at all. Well, Michigan will run on the Buckeyes, and Anthony Carter will have a field day against that defensive secondary. The way I see it, Michigan 21, Ohio State 17. That weather didn't seem to dampen the spirit, nor did the gray skies keep the fans of the maize and blue from showing their true colors. The rally's over now, and all the participants are waiting for the kickoff tomorrow for the game. Carmen? Well, Eli Zarrett is in for Al Ackerman tonight, and you know the excitement out of it. But Even if you're not a sportsman, yeah. anybody who doesn't get excited about this must not be much fun to be with, but we kind of count on this as a, as a key part of our sports diet of the year, this perennial Big Ten Rose Bowl State Pride Heavyweight Championship of Midwest College Football. But although the circumstances are almost constant, the style of the game has changed, as Jim Brandstatter reports. Since 1969, when Bo Schembechler arrived at Michigan to face the Buckeyes and Woody Hayes, the games resembled two heavyweights slugging it out toe-to-toe, -to -toe, pushing and shoving for every inch. There wasn't a whole lot of finesse involved, and that's the way it was for years, because when you passed, bad things happened. But then Earl Bruce arrived in Columbus, along with quarterback Arch Schleister, number 10, who could throw. At Michigan, a little fellow named Anthony Carter showed up who could fly and catch, too. So the slugging heavyweights changed it around. Not to the extent that it was an aerial circus, but enough to keep the fans in their seats instead of going for hot dogs knowing they wouldn't miss anything. The reason, according to Earl Bruce, is simple. What they talk about is the great receivers in the league and the great passers in the league, and if you're very intelligent as a person, you're going to have to recognize that there are going to be a lot more passes thrown and a lot more passing yardage against football teams than normal. And you're going to see some uh, ridiculously open receivers because you are caught trying to stop them three different ways, and that's very difficult to do. But even in these big games with the high-powered offenses, defense is dominated. Why? Because of the turnover. The mistake is magnified in this game. And any time you come out and just absolutely free wheel and uh, do everything that you would do against maybe a lesser team, uh, the turnovers could kill you. And that's the beauty of the game. The coach can gamble and turn it loose, or he can play safe. Strategy, a battle of wills. Or is it? Coach against coach is the most overplayed thing the media has uh, cooked up. After all, it is a player's game and has been for years. And whether it's the pass or run, they still have to execute to win. I'm Jim Brands that are reporting News 4 Detroit. Usually a conservative low scoring affair. Dave Diles, who has been in Columbus this week, tells us why. 
They call it football with good reason. Five times in the last 10 years, the Ohio State-Michigan game has been decided by field goals because somebody could kick one or because somebody else could not. This year, the Michigan kicking game has been suspect. Junior Ali Haji Sheik consistently puts his kickoffs out of the end zone, but putting field goals through the uprights is another matter. Haji Sheik has connected on just three of seven field goal attempts and none from more than 42 yards out. Meanwhile, Ohio State's senior place kicker, Bob Atha, leads the Big Ten in kicking. He's hit on 12 of 16 field goal attempts and averages nearly nine points a game. His success has come from a lot of hard work, but the single most important thing, he says, is concentration. I try to look at, for the snap, the ball coming through the center's legs at the first thing, and at that point on, I don't think about anything. I just look at the tee and look at the ball and, and just try to tell myself I've done it a thousand times, I'm going to do it again. Atha has spent four years at Ohio State, and he spent most of three of them on the bench, seeing only spot duty as Art Schleister's backup at quarterback. As a kicker, he watched Vladi Janikiewski rewrite the Buckeye record books. It gave him a lot of time to recall his career at Ohio State, one filled with ups and downs. Your best memory of kicking at Ohio State in four years? I guess it would have to be last week up at Purdue, or a couple weeks ago. I made my 53-yarder my longest in my college career. I just think that was a real highlight for me. Worst memory? My worst memory. I would guess I'd have to say the Gator Bowl. My freshman year, I was sitting, I was standing right next to Coach Hayes, ready to go in and kick the game-winning field goal, and now the rest is to be seen. And so on Saturday, it's Ohio State versus Michigan, or perhaps Bob Atha versus Ali Haji Sheik. Dave Dials, Channel 7 Sports. <laughs>